Okay, so um, thank you for the introduction. Uh, Helen and I have been working together a long time, it seems. <laughs> um, and um, so I, at least for the last probably 10 years, have been in the CTO office because they don't know what to do with me. So, um, but my main charter is to assist um, scientists in porting and optimizing their applications. And I, I typically find my own work. Um, you know, for example, um, NERSC had a uh, A100. We didn't support A100s. And so I really pushed um, our the programming environment team to generate code for the A100. And that combined with our um, open ACC and open MP offload compiler really gives um, users a good choice for um, using um, Perlmutter. Um, so let me show you my, let's see. Oh, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little introduction. And then, uh, look at steps moving an application to GPU. Um, I'm gonna use a very simple example because you know I wanna be um, honest that moving an application to a GPU is very difficult. Um, and so therefore I think it's best to work um, with some smaller examples to kind of see the impact that um, data motion has um, and how you can optimize the data motion. And our tools are, are extremely good at identifying bottlenecks in, um, um, a GPU code. Okay, and, and so then I'm gonna um, give you some slides up first just to introduce you to the tools. And then I'm gonna really do a demo of taking Hamino uh, and uh, using Reveal, Perf Tools and Reveal to optimize an offload, uh, open MP offload version uh, for the A100. And what I'm doing with open MP on um, offload can also be done with open ACC, although Reveal doesn't generate open MP or open ACC directives. Okay, so Supercomputing and I have been around for around 55 years, although I'm a lot older than 55. Um, and the interesting thing is the architecture we have today, what really was reduced, was introduced uh, over the last 55 years. And there have been many examples where I have used ILLIAC 4 um, papers to optimize code for the Cray. And um, so, you know, we have um, things like Beowulf that came in 1995 that really introduced uh, message passing. Um, we have um, MemD shared memory parallelism. Uh, that came in uh, in the 80s and, and of course on the microprocessors um, in the early 2000s. And low level SIMD parallelism, 
which first occurred on the Iliac IV in 1970. Um, now, I just thought I'd give you an idea of my, um, I've worked for a lot of people <laughs> and I've worked on a lot of machines. Uh, we worked on the very first Cray-1 um, that was delivered to Los Alamos in 1976. Um, we've done a lot of work for connection machine. I mean, this was before I came to Cray. Um, I was at IBM Research for quite a while. Well, three years, not quite a while. Um, and that's where I started a group where we were really trying to help users port and optimize their applications. And I have my retirement date down there, 7-2024. That's when I will be 80 years old. So I figured no one should work in their 80s. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that we have a lot of software. Um, now, recently, NERSC hasn't really been using our software because we haven't supported um, the A100, but now we do. And I'm really uh, looking forward to working with NERSC on helping them not only use our compilers and tools, but MPI, um, and debuggers, et cetera. Now, one thing that we always do is when you have a machine, you might have three different programming environments. Um, in fact, I noticed that when you when I log on to Perlmutter, that um, PRG, ENV, GNU is the default. So I need to swap that to PRG ENV Cray. Okay, but we offer the tools MPI um, in supporting some of these other compilers. All right, now one of the tools that we have is a um, Apprentice 2 where you can actually display very useful information from your profile. And I'll be going through a lot of these profiles um, during this tutorial. And then we have Reveal. And in, recently um, we released a version of Re Reveal that actually generates GPU offload directives. And I'll be doing a demo. Um, so the whole idea is when you choose a loop to parallelize, you then are asked, do you want to scope this for a GPU or do you want to scope it for shared memory host? OK, let's talk a little about about directive-based programming models. You know, right now, there, there's a lot of people who are coming up with um, programming models for using GPUs. And matter of fact, these days, NVIDIA are pretty much saying, you know, let's just use the language itself, like C++, uh, they have had some great success in actually using standard C++ and uh, running the code on the GPU. Now, they've also tried this with Fortran um, and have not been as successful because Fortran does not have the capabilities um, that C++ has to make up for some of the things. So really, if you have a Fortran code, you really are, I 
advise that you really consider open MP offload or open ACC. And which one? You know, we support both. Um, they both are pretty equal. Some say open MP offload is harder to use. Um, I'm not so sure about that. Um, and um, so I do both. And unfortunately, it was funny today because I was working on optimizing something in OpenMP offload, and I forgot the command or the directive because I've been working on OpenACC on the ICON climate model in Europe. Um, with um, CSCS and DKRZ. And so I've been doing a lot of open ACC. And then when you go to open MP offload, you know, it's kind of like switching between English and Portuguese. Okay. So one of the things, in fact, this is a recommendation that Nurse had a long time ago. And they basically said, look, we like perf tools, but it's too difficult to use. And so the programming environment people made perf tools light, perf tools light loops, and perf tools light HBM. And these are extremely easy to use because all you have to do is um, load the module, perf tools light. On your system, when you swap over to programming environment Cray, you, uh, perf tools base is already loaded. Then you build your application, you run your application, and a statistics report comes out with standard out. And now this also generates a directory of profile data to be examined with different options. And I'll show you what those are. And so Hamino is, um, is a Jacobi relaxation method. It's one routine uses 98% of the time. Okay, so, you know, it, it's pretty easy to um, get that running in shared memory, but putting it on the accelerator has some complications. So what we're gonna do is first, we're going in, in the slide here, uh, when I do the demos, I'll be running on four uh, nodes, um, but, um, here I just ran on two. So I loaded perf tools light and then I um, um, compiled and ran it. And this is the first table that I get. Okay. Now that that's pretty silly. <laughs> this is a sampling run. So this thing ran in 64 seconds. Uh, the sampling is done every 100th of a microsecond. But the default for um, perf tools is that we only show you what uses more than 1% of the time. Well, when something uses 98.8% of the time, you don't expect much other stuff to be shown. But there is this minus capital T that is uh, very nice uh, because if you use that, you get everything. Well, not everything. Um, you get um, the um, low level uh, routines that are used. And they're grouped in user space, 
they're grouped in MPI and et cetera, are system level routines. And like Cray mem copy Rome is an optimized mem copy. And then you have MPI um, and Jacobi is the major routine. And a net MT just initializes the uh, arrays. Now we also show you imbalance. Um, in other words, this means the difference between uh, the average and the minimum uh, processor was only uh, 51 samples. So very, very small amount of load imbalance. Of course, with MPI, you tend to have a lot of load imbalance because when you do your send receives, especially with only two processors, you know, people are going to be waiting for stuff. Okay. Um, now, table two is kind of a, shows you what the PEs are using, how much time. Um, and um, so, you know, there's only two processors there. Um, and it once again, that shows the imbalance. We also have a table that gives us hardware counters. Uh, and this is just, you know, and primarily cache utilization um, and memory bandwidth. Um, and um, so it's just kind of a good overview of, of how you're doing cache wise. Um, and uh, your read and write memory traffic um, is uh, not very good. This application is highly memory bandwidth limited. All right, it gives you I.O. information. Uh, there's only two files, standard error and standard out. But it gives you, you know, like if you're doing a lot of I.O., it gives you the average writes per writer rank. It gives you the bytes per call, um, et cetera. So it gives you a lot of neat information. Now, this is what I like about Perf Tools Lite, is within the routine, it shows you the line level on a line level, how much time is used. So this is saying that, that the code at 2014 is using 86% of the time. Now, one of the things that you want to do when you compile is you want to use minus H list equal A or minus RM to get an annotated listing of the code because what we're going to do, I hope you can see that. Um, I wanted to kind of, this is 214. So this code that's in this quadruply nested loop. So this is the main thing. What's happening here? We're going over a number of iterations. And then for each iteration, we are um, relaxing the, the pressure or coming to converge to a pressure. Um, and this encompasses, this outer loop encompasses um, a halo exchange as well as a MPI all reduce of WGOSA, which is kind of our error checking. Um, okay, so there's um, where all the codes being used. Now let's let's do shared memory parallelism on that. 
and then we're going to put it on the GPU. Okay. Now, the thing that's extremely important when you're going to parallelize um, uh, application is you want to know the do loop iteration count. And so what we're going to do is we're not going to use perf tools light. We're going to use perf tools light loops. And so we use light loops. We compile. This is giving us that um, annotated listing. Um, and then we're going to run. Okay. And then we get this call tree that shows us this is the main routine. And you can see there's a bug here because this can't use 197% of the time, uh, but the rest of the numbers are correct. Um, so not only do we have the percent of time, um, and we also have the average loop trip count. So this outer loop is 74, and then we have three inner loops that are basically um, 125, 125, and this is um, varies uh, the length of the loop. Now, this init is not in, contained in that loop. You have to go back to here. In other words, it is also called from level one because it's a level two. And so this is showing us the indentation in the call tree. Okay. And so, and then we see that our actually um, Annette is, it's not showing that it's called from um, some other routines here. But this is giving us the do loop length. Okay, so now here we know that that this is not going to be parallelized. Okay, now can you see this V here? That means that this loop was vectorized, and it was also unrolled by three. Okay. And then this loop, I'm sorry about that, but um, it was vectorized as well. Uh, and so really what we want to do is look at parallelizing this K loop, or maybe even collapsing these three loops together. So in order to do that, we need to use reveal. Okay, and Reveal needs a program library. And this is just another compile. It is not, you don't run this. And you don't want any perf tools experiments loaded. So we unload perf tools light loops, and then we compile generating a program library and we call it Hamino.pl. And this is the source file. And then we invoke reveal. We give it this PL. And we give it the directory from the PerfTools light loops that was generated here. So this is part. This is um, what we actually are going to give reveal. Okay. Okay. So reveal comes up and it, it comes to um, this outer iteration loop. And it says, you know, do you want to, you know, you can right click on this loop and say scope it. But this is an iteration loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose the
the loop at 211. Okay. And so this display comes up and it says scope for CPU or scope for GPU. Okay. So we're going to scope it for the CPU. Now it comes up with its analysis. And this capital R means this is a reduction. And it automatically parallelized that loop. Uh, there's no concerns. What these uh, symbols mean, this is private. Each uh, thread is going to have a copy of that. This is shared, so each thread is going to use the same copy. If a C is highlighted, that says that this is a real conflict. In other words, this is recursion, and, or it introduces loop carried dependencies. The U means that it's unknown. In, in other words, the compiler doesn't know what to do with it. So if, if this came up with a U for S0, we could come in and change it to a P. But here, everything is fine. So we say insert directive. And it inserts directives. Now, by default, it scopes everything. Okay. And so it turns out that um, these are shared, these are private, and this is a reduction function. And it gives you a little indicator saying that this loop was uh, parallelized. Now, that's 98% of the time, so why don't we start, stop there? And so we stop and we run that, and we scale it up to 16 threads, which does, it, it has an inflection point because of, um, it's kind of strange, it's actually scaling better, um, when it when it goes across two NUMA regions, you know the memory bandwidth is is higher on this ROM processor. So that looked pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing this, and I am going to share. this. Okay, so this is um, running in X. This is an X window. All right. Now, I have a number of directories. I have a directory that's the original. I have a directory to um, get ready for reveal or to run reveal in. And then I have a directory to run the GPUs in. And I'm gonna go into four demos because I have cleaned these up. And so what I'm going to do is here I am. Okay. And so the very first thing I'm going to do is let's make sure that I have the right modules. I do. Um, I, I had already uh, done the swap. This is the programming environment. We're using uh, 1401, um, 
next month we're releasing 1404, which is um, has significant open ACC improvements. This is the module for the A100. Um, this is Perf Tools Base. Uh, live sign, um, in pitch. We also need, when we use um, perf tools, we have to remove, um, I forget what the name of it is. I Darshan. Think it, Darshan. Yeah, Darshan. Darshan. I have this little. So this is what my setup does. And um, so that's that's where I'm okay. So now what I'm gonna I'm gonna do a module load perf tools light. Well, I gotta spell it right. Okay, um, now I have this file compit. And um, no. this is got a, uh, I'll, so all I'm gonna do now is compile it. So, Okay, so it basically said it's created this instrument and now I'm going to run it. Uh, and I have this thing called S run it. And um, it doesn't have the reservation in it. Oh, that's right. I'm, oops. Uh, you can add dash capital A in train two. I put it in the chat if you want to check it. Okay. CPU, right? Yeah. Okay. Could add, actually, you should ask as much dash A and train two. Okay. Change. Oh, so I'll just put this um, there and. <clears throat> Okay, train in train two. Whoop. So I'll just do a S batch S run. Okay. Now amino is a kind of weird thing. And actually, um It runs a couple iterations of Jacoby, and then it figures out how many iterations of Jacoby would take um, a minute to run, okay? Now, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep uh, the time here.
All right, so it's almost done because. You can just type SQS uh, to simplify it. It just shows oh, you. Oh, okay. So we Thank you. <laughs> so a no scrapper. All right, here we go. So we're going to cat slurm. All right, so what do we have here? In fact, what I want to do is behind this. Okay, so um, this these are the dimensions. Um, and it does a rehearsal. And these are the megaflops and the time. And then it executes at 9,118 times. And so this is um, the rating. So the score is. Now this is on one G or CPU, 261.95 Pentium 3 processors. Okay. All right. So then we go down and it tells us, um, it tells us the number of ranks how many PEs are on each node, number of threads, number of cores per socket, um, and pretty much the, the name and the speed, um, and uh, the average processing time, high memory mark, IO rate, and then it shows us um, the profile, which is a li little different because of perf tools like, okay. Okay, and then um, we have pretty much the kinds of things that I showed you before. It has energy, power usage, um, output. Okay. Now, one thing I can do is I can now do a path report minus output a call tree. Okay. So here's the call tree from this code. It, main program calls Jacoby. Jacoby uses 92% exclusive, and it uses 4.8% when it calls sin P, which calls sin P1 and sin P2, and MPI weight all on both of those. Okay, so that's a call tree. Another one you have that you can use is a, and these are all if you do a, um, a man um, patent report. Callers is a bottom up call tree. Okay. So Jacoby is called from this guy. MPI is called from MP, or MPI weight all is called from these two, uh, which are called from SINP, which are, have this, as you can see. So that's, those are two very, 
you can imagine how helpful that would be on a very large program. I like first rules. Um, okay, so now in order to get ready um, for um, reveal, we need perf tools like loops. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to, oh, we'll do it here. Okay. So I'm going to... Okay, so I'm going to compile that. Okay, and then um, and then I'm going to s batch the same thing as I ran before. Only this time it's going to give me instead of a sampling directory. That didn't work. Wait a minute, let me get it. Yeah. Instead of a sampling directory with an S at the end, it's giving me a tracing directory with the T. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move this over to the reveal directory. Okay. Because reveal needs this uh, when it analyzes the code. By the way, you know, please interrupt if you have any questions whatsoever. Because as you can see, unfortunately, I I chose an application that takes, I think it's finished. Okay. All right, now let's look at... Uh, four, one, three. All right, so we get the same thing. This is actually going to run, it ran faster, um, run slower because loops are being instrumented. So here are our loops that take more than 1% of the time. And um, you can see there are uh, 125, this one is 62. Uh, 126, and then this is the call tree. Okay, but anyways, what we're going to do, we want to move Camino X plus 40. Amino. Okay. Now we want to build a program library. Now, when we're building a program library, we do not want um, 
Perf Tools line loaded. And also, sometimes we have to rebuild the program library. And so I always remove the program library before I rebuild them. Okay. So it's going to build a program library called Hamino.pl. It does generate an executable, but um, it, we're not going to run it. Oh, I don't like that. I thought I unloaded that. Because you do not want the instrumentation in the database. You just want the, the code. All right. So we have this Amino PL. So now what we're going to do is reveal Amino dot pl and amino x plus now why is it doing did i spell h -E? uh for instrumented experiments you have to have the directory to um um Luster scratch, or you could make a directory there and um, run it on in your global home. Well, I was using it here this morning. You are um, in home, right? No, it up. You can make a directory in scratch and uh, export, or if you run directory from scratch, then you don't have to do this step. This is Let the cluster stuff. Okay, we got it. Okay, so this is reveal. And what it's showing us are all the loops in the program. Okay, now there are several different ways we can look at it. Um, there's a function view that shows you the loops in each function. Okay. Um, there's a nested loop view. That's very nice. But since we're going to be parallelizing more, I want to go to this function view. Okay, and now in Jacoby, the top loop is the iteration loop. We already know that. So we really want to do 211. So we right click and scope loop. Okay. And this says scope for CPU. We did that already. So we're going to scope it for GPU. Okay. Now, this is one of the big problems with using the accelerator. What this is telling us, see these Gs? That says that these variables are in an include file 
or a common block or a module. And they are going to be used all over the program. Okay. Now, it turns out um, it did parallelize this. However, if I show directives, okay, these are the directives that it's going to put in. And these are all fine and dandy, except for this. What this is saying is every time you come here, you have to bring these arrays in from the host and write these arrays back to the host. Now that is a tremendous amount of data movement. Okay. However, it's the only way you're assured of getting the right answers. Because the problem is that um, you made the next loop you encounter that used uh, P or, or used WRK um, may not be on the accelerator. It may be on the uh, host. And so therefore, what this is doing is maintaining the same data on the host and the accelerator. Now, this is going to be very inefficient, but we're going to take care of it, OK? And I'm, um, I don't like this, <laughs> by the way. All right, so we insert directives and we close. So here are our directives. Okay. Now we notice that these are all included in that. So let's go here. So here is another one that looks pretty uh, innocent. So let's scope that. All right, so that also has global variables. If I show the directive, I have this, this same thing here. So I am going to insert directives and close. OK, and now I'm going to go down into Send P1. All right. Now, this code, if you get the original off of the web, it uses MPI data types. In fact, let me scroll up and show you. Right there. Now, the problem with this is that MPI packs the buffer. And that buffer is going to be packed on the host. So you have to copy the array that you have the halo exchange, the whole array. Now, what I did is I don't use the um, MPI um, types. I pack the arrays myself, OK? And, and so this is a packed array. And so what I'm going to do is scope that loop. All right, so there are a couple issues here. 
first XSN and XSS. The problem is, is these are local arrays. And the compiler wants to know what you want to do with them. Where did I put that? Huh. This is one thing I don't like about NX, I think. Um, let's see. There we go. Um, so I'm going to make these allocate because they're local arrays that are only going to be used on the GPU. Okay. Now, the other problem we have is with iCal. So with iCal. Move on. And that is it's incrementing um, in the loop. And basically, all we need to do is say that it is private. But we need to enable this first private, which is actually done automatically for us. So now that we've done those three changes, let's show the directive. All right, and so here's I count. And um, it's allocating these two arrays. So I'm gonna insert directives and close. All right, so then we're gonna go on to that. This is the unpacking loop. All right, and it doesn't have a problem with these two um, buffers because we took care of them in the previous loop. So all we have to do is that, insert directives and clause. Okay, now we're gonna go here. Only have a couple more. So we're going to allocate these and turn that private. Okay. And we have this one. All right. Now, the other thing we want to do is when these arrays are allocated, we want to allocate them on the GPU. So in the initialization, we're going to put that on. That's where all these global arrays are initialized. And it is parallelized. It uses very little time, but if we don't put it on the accelerator, it's going to require a lot of data transfer. And there's one other loop. OK. So we have um, sin p is not used. Um, oh, wait a minute. Maybe it is. We also have to do sin p3. So we want to allocate these. 
and make that private. Am I going too fast? I probably am, but at least you'll have the recording. Okay, so that is all the, all right. There are some loops in here, but this is in setting up the Cartesian grid. So um, those aren't even using any of the um, variables that we're putting on the accelerator. And so what we have succeeded in doing is we have put every do loop that uses those work arrays on the accelerator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save all. And there's only one file. And that basically is overwriting our original code with um, the parallelized um, code, okay? Now, I'm sorry to say this, but Reveal has a bug that I have already reported. And they said they couldn't get, um, um, it fixed by the time of this tutorial, but they'll work on it. And the problem is that it doesn't save all of the work that we did. So therefore, what I am going to do is I am going to go to... Okay, this is what I did earlier today by a tedious process to make sure that everything was included. And um, um, don't tell me that I don't have that. Okay, so this is the one that has um, all of the always in it. Um, and we do, this is the initialization. And this is the actual calculation. And um, and then this is the packing and unpacking of the buffers. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we are going, so there is a perf tools like GPU, but I don't like it. And so I like to use just perf tools. And with perf tools, you have to load perf tools. And this just removes something if you do it more than once. In order to run on the accelerator, you need minus H O M P. This is not the optimized version. This is the version I just compiled. And this is the path build. 
And this is going to generate amino X plus PAT. Oops, I made a mistake. Okay. So let's compile it. You know, it's like it's not, it's very strange. Well, I'll remove it myself. Okay. So we now have this amino plus pat, okay? And um, so let's look at our S run it. Okay, so I'm gonna run it on four nodes, one task per node, four GPUs, one GPU per task. And this is not the optimized version. It is instrument. Okay. So that's the directory of instrumentation. Let's see. Okay. But what I wanna look at is the, I'm gonna do a PAT report minus capital T on amino X plus PAT plus one, two, and put it in profile I'm gonna say original. Now I'm gonna okay. So this is telling me what I'm running on. And what you see is that um, these two kernel, this sync weight is waiting for a kernel to finish. And the only way I can make the font small. I'm trying to find the line number here. Oh, here it is, 251. So let's... All right, so this kernel right here, 
All right. This is saying that it is on the GPU, multi-threaded. This loop is spread across the SMs. This inner loop is um, spread across the warps. Um, and and it's unrolled by three. But this is using most of the time. Okay. Let's see about the... And the next one is 263. which is this one right here. So those two loops are using most of the time. Um, and then we have copies. And these copies are for those two loops. And then we have um, some more weights and the kernels is kind of similar. These are all in the sins. And then these are all the copies. Okay, now let's see. I'm, I want to put down... Um, the timing for this. So this actually was equivalent to sixty nine forty six pinium threes. So it is uh, on the order of uh, two hundred times faster or 300 times faster, 250, 300 times faster. But what I want to do is I kind of want to optimize things. And so what I want to do is look at this um, amino B. So let's um, go at the start and look for reveal. So what did I do? Well, I took out all the map always, okay? Um, and so what I'm trying to do is minimize the communication. And another good thing is to introduce a data region. And, and so basically what this data region is saying is that all of these arrays are present and they're used as input. 
So I pretty much got rid of the always. Okay. And um, the same for this one. And I have an end data region here. So I don't have to deal with any ins and outs on the, um, I'm only dealing with the actual decomposition of the loop. Now, when we get down to the, um, then routines, Nope, not yet. There we go. Okay, I also have a data region up here where I allocate the buffers, all four buffers. There are receive buffers and send buffers in in Z, they're east and west. And so it's, now I do have to, okay. So the, the bottom line here is I received these uh, two buffers and they're on the host. I'm not doing it on the GPU. I'll show you that back in the presentation. Um, and so I have to map these to the accelerator. And that's the same on the other two. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to Oh, that's oh, I just did ah, not original. <laughs> the thing I just showed you compiled op. I'm sorry. So let's do the original. I, I thought something was screwy because it ran too fast. It's not called original. It's just that. Okay. Okay. All right, so we're, so the optimized one ran 250 times faster. We're going to see with all those data transfers how fast the original that um, reveal generated um, with all the map always in it. Okay, so we're going to do a pat report minus P.
profile flow. Okay. Okay, this is what I expected. So with all those map always, now when when reveal is is parallelizing those individual loops, it's not looking at the whole program. So in order to get the right answers, it has to do those updates before and after the loop. And unfortunately, um, that's the name of the game. Now, we do support unified memory. Well, let me put it this way. Unified memory will be available later this year. When you have unified memory, you don't have to worry about those map always. So that is the solution coming down the road. But as you can see, the, you know, close to 80% of the time is spent moving data. And then the, that important kernel is way down here. Now let's see how slow this is. So we look at this uh, slurm. Three, two, three, one, six. Okay, it's 222. So it is actually slower than one core on the host. So going in and doing that optimization that I um, showed you actually ran 300 times faster because of all that data movement. Did I confuse people there? I mean, because I did make a mistake. Uh, let, in fact, just to convince you that I didn't make a bad mistake, I'm gonna go in and um, do the optimized one. Okay, so now we have this um, optimized plus path. And I'm going to do that. Are there any questions from anybody? Anybody put any, oh, there are a lot of things in the chat. I should be looking at Are you able to see the Google Doc as well? See the one? The Google Doc for Q&A. Oh, the chat is uh, some discussions of uh, following that should be okay. There are questions in Google Doc and someone being answered. Okay. And uh, so your um, demo is clear.
Yes, there is. That um, there's if you do a man on pat build, it will um, give you an option to say this is the output. Oh, so people are already answering. Yeah, you you oh, can good. comment on any of the questions and answers. Yeah. And if you do, um, read the questions first, please, so we know which one you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, so Perf Tools is not open source. Um, it is a proprietary software that we've put a lot of money into. Uh, and I don't think we'll be open sourcing it. Um, I'm not familiar with Google Perf tools, I guess. Yeah, and Perf tools line is really the same thing as Perf tools except it does sampling and perf tools does tracing no you cannot do perf tools like loops on the gpu uh but the profiling really uh, helps you. Um, in fact, uh, let me go back to the presentation. Mm -hmm. I wonder where it went. Oh, that's because of um, Oh, there it is. Okay. So this is pretty much what we went through. All right, and this is showing you how to do the um, perf tools. And so then this is a little different profile with the same results where it's all copy. This one, I did not have the uh, MPI buffers. Um, I use the MPI types and that requires that P, the entire P array, has to be transferred to the host. So you never really get a good performance I, unless you change that, those send receives to uh, packing on the accelerator. Okay, so yeah, these, Okay, yeah, this is the issue with the version in the presentation. But I I fixed that this morning. <laughs> uh, and, you know, and that's what I have on the system there. And by the way, Alan, I can tar up um, those directories and people can play with them. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but need to move to somewhere because we can't unless we open up your directory. <laughs> yeah, your account. And these are here again. These listings, these annotated listings, are very useful. All right, this talks about packing and unpacking buffers for Leslie 3D. 
but it's the same thing. Um, and so we, we kind of uh, pack the buffers. And then in this case, I update um, instead of using, you know, I could have had a um, map um, from for this buffer. But the other way is after the fact, just do an update from the accelerator to the host. And then on the receives, you've got to wait until th um, things are received, which is after the MPI wait. And then you do the unpacking into the variable. Here again, I'm doing the update to the accelerator because when I receive it, it it's on the host. All right, now this is something I was gonna do, but I didn't have time for. Um, but you do not need those uh, buffers on the host. What you can do is using um, inner data, you can allocate the buffers and then use device pointers which basically tells MPI that R underscore W is on the device. And so that is transferred to the NIC without going through host memory. And then same with uh, sends. You don't need any updates. You're just saying, okay, these device pointers are gonna um, are all the the halo buffers are on the device, and we're gonna use those in the MPI send. And I did this on um, uh, Pizdan. And you can see this is the difference between using host pointers, device pointers, and host buffers. And as you get to larger node counts, it really makes a much bigger difference. Okay. Now, there's another thing that is available, and I can show you this. Um, Basically, this environment variable tells you everything that's transferred and where it's transferred from. And everything, all the kernels. Okay, and that's debug one. If you use debug two, you get the sizes of all the arrays. So this gives you much more output. If you use debug three, you get the size, you get the uh, pointer addresses, you get the strides. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so these are very useful, especially if you have an application that is crashing, if you set this environment variable, it will show you exactly what kernel it was in when it crashed. Now, pretty soon, we'll be able to find where within the kernel you crashed. But that's coming down the pipe. So what have we learned? Perf tools is excellent for identifying issues in existing applications 
for improving threading, vectorization, or scalar optimization. Reveal can help with the difficult job of scoping. It is more difficult, if not impossible, for C++. If you have simple C++, it'll help you. But it really is much better on Fortran. Okay, and then the other bullet here is once we have, and Helen, as a matter of fact, once, once we have a unified memory uh, working on the A100, I should come back and do a shorter tutorial because um, this is going to change. Because with you know, if you use unified memory, then um, you you have different problems with data mm -hmm. Moodle. Yep. Okay. So. Okay. So that's the end of the presentation. But let's go back and let me show you. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set ENV, pray ACC debug two. How about export gray ACC debug equal to, okay. Oh, I got to put it into S run it. it. It's fine. If you put it on the command line and I'll export it to the Slurm batch script. I'm sorry. Oh, we will. If you don't put it in, in it, it'll still export it because it's already oh, good. in your environment. Okay. Great. Now, what you're going to see is we get a much bigger output. <laughs> okay. Okay, and so this really, I think, is very useful. Okay, so basically, oh, you should only use one GPU when you do this, because we're going to get four copies. So let me read. Dude, no, I can't. And yeah, I have to. Man, I have to do too much. To, but we're getting four copies of this. But it it kind of tells you about the execution, um, what line number it's at, um, And what you'll see is that it's going to, it's freeing some data. Um, so it, it does a lot of this where it does the analysis of what's needed and then if things are present, it doesn't have to transfer anything. So then this is the important, um, as a matter of fact, if I, oh. See, here's one that it really, 
uh, had to transfer some data back to the host. Mm -hmm. Here it had to transfer eight bytes um, to the accelerator. But you should really only run it on one GPU and then you'll get um, just a single copy. Okay. So has this been helpful for you? Yes. I now, don't know. <laughs> Especially on the GPU. I think what I get is uh, the, the profile for uh, the uh, scope for GPU. I think this is new to me. I haven't seen this button before. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now there are some problems with it. We're going to get you a new version probably next month. So, I mean, you can use it on simple things, but you might find that it doesn't uh, keep the directives. You might have to, there are ways that you can copy the directive and then paste it in yourself. If you show directive, there's a copy button. Um, yeah, otherwise it'll overwrite your original code. Yeah. Um, and the one thing I want to point out is that once you scoped and you do all this review of tools and using create compiler afterwards, the generate um, code, you can use any yes. compiler and it's portable. Oh, yes, yes, that's right. Uh, I'm so, uh, uh, Helen is absolutely right because we generate standard OpenMP offload. Uh, and so any compiler should be able to um, compile it. And it's also uh, it's really helpful to do all the scoping automatically because it's gonna and just create the, the directives for our users. So I think for advanced yeah. users, they can do it themselves, but for majority of other users, it's really handy. Yes, yes. I mean, you still have to do some work in optimizing and like that, but it it's really kind of a tenth of what the effort is without it. Okay, are there any questions that I didn't uh, address?